evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Life Changes Covenant Ministries. Oh, I just call some neighbors, some friends, some enemies, church folk, kin folk, bad folk, ugly folk, beautiful folk, and tell them to tune in. Something good will happen to them. Amen. Uh, gonna wait a minute or two. We're gonna have a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. Please excuse my glasses that I have on, but that old sty that's been trying to trouble my eye it came back, and so I'm fighting that. So keep, please keep me in your prayers. It's a stubborn thing, but it's going to be defeat already defeated through and by the word of the Lord. Amen. It's gone now. So let's get ready because I have a very very good word here today that is especially good for the church. Amen. So let's uh, have a word of prayer and then we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank and I praise you, Lord, for allowing us to be in another day, to see another day. Thank you for giving us our right minds, perfect and soundness of mind and, and uh, healing in our bodies, making us every whit whole. And we give you the glory, honor, and the praise. Now, Lord, as we go into your word tonight, I ask that you just open the ears of your people that they can hear and anoint their hearts to understand what they hear and let what they hear fall on the good ground of their heart that they can be doers of what they hear, not hearers only. And Father, speak through my mouth, Holy Spirit, think through my mind that all of you and none of me, none of me, and all of you be seen and heard in Jesus' name. And Father, I give you all the glory, all the honor and the praise for it. Without you, I can do nothing and I am nothing without you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get started. Let me get my own stuff here. Let's get started. Tonight's message is going to be on uh, understanding kingdom stewardship, understanding kingdom stewardship and i know once you hear the term stewardship the first thing probably come to your mind is money but i'm not going to be talking about stewardship of money tonight it's going to be about something else and we'll be talking about kingdom understanding kingdom stewardship amen very important in especially in the body of christ kingdom stewardship Kingdom stewardship is a spiritual appointment. I'm going to try to take my time and teach this this evening. So bear with me and get your papers and your pens and your Bibles and let's get ready to roll. So as a steward of God's kingdom, you already have an assignment. The moment you were born into the kingdom of God, you were born again. You were already have an assignment. You didn't have to ask for one. You were already given one. You've been hired to be a steward in the highest system in the universe. You've been hired to be an employee <laughs> in the highest system in the universe. You can't get no higher than God. You can't get no higher than the kingdom of God. So you are already hired in the highest system in the universe. See yourself hired for pay. You're not doing it free. You're not doing it for nothing. See yourself hired for pay and not doing doing charity work. Amen. Work, but one that's already engaged in an assignment in the kingdom of the most high God. See yourself hired for pay and not doing charity work, but one that's already engaged in an assignment in the kingdom of the most high God. Each and every one of us has an assignment in the kingdom of the most high God. Every form of kingdom service is essential. Every form of kingdom service is essential. But we're going to show you something that's more the most important uh, uh, part of stewardship, kingdom stewardship. So, but every form of kingdom service is essential, such as ushering in, a, in the church. That's kingdom service. That's essential. Singing on the choir, praise and worship team. That's essential. Amen. Deacons, that's essential. You got to have somebody to deek. Amen. You know, greeters, musicians, children's ministry, and much, much more that goes on in ministries. Amen. These mentioned, everything I mentioned, they are considered as physical uh, stewardship. 
This is physical stewardship. But if we understand from skip scriptures that spiritual stewardship is far more important than physical stu uh, stewardship. Amen. Spiritual stewardship is much more important than physical stewardship. Just take, for instance, Jesus said, I pray that thy kingdom come. See, that's that's a part of spiritual stewardship. Prayer is a part of spiritual stewardship. And uh, it's very important that we pray. But the highest, uh, listen at this, but if we understand from Scripture that spiritual stewardship is far more important because it occupies the core of God's agenda for mankind. It operates the core of God's agenda for mankind, spiritual uh, uh, stewardship. The highest form of service is the winning of souls. That's the stewardship that we'll be talking about this evening. The highest form of service is the winning of souls in the sight of God. All these other things are secondary, ushering, the singing, and all of that. But the highest thing, the highest form of service is the winning of souls in the sight of God. All other things are secondary, necessary, but secondary. Amen. So redemption of souls is God's number one interest on the earth, earth. And that was the only reason he sent Jesus. He didn't send Jesus for no other reason. The only reason he sent Jesus, uh, G well, the only reason Jesus came to earth was to redeem lost mankind. He was so, the souls of man was so important to God. Redemptions of souls is God's number one entrance, inter, interest on the earth. And that was the only reason he sent Jesus Christ. Redemption of souls is God's heartbeat. The redemption of souls is God's heartbeat. The num and, and the number one interest of God on this earth realm. Amen. And that was the only reason he sent Jesus. Scripture tells us in John 3, 16, we call this the golden scripture of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't, he wasn't concerned about nothing else. He was concerned about lost mankind. So the God interest, the heart of God is for lost mankind. Redemption of souls is God's number one entrance on the earth. And that was the only reason he sent Jesus Christ. We must know what it takes to make our labor profitable. Watch this now. In the book of Ecclesiastes 10, 15, it reads, in all labor, there is profit. But what must I do and how must I do it to make it profitable? Remember, scripture says the labor of the foolish worth every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. So there's no greater uh, motivation than to know that our labor is guaranteed a future return. When you are laboring to reach the lost, to bring them out of darkness into the marvelous light of God, your labor uh, 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 demands a future return. Your labor is not in vain when you're trying to snatch the souls of lost mankind out of darkness and bring them into the light of God. Servanthood begins in the heart. Servanthood begins in the heart. Our attitude to kingdom service is a mirror of our heart. Let me say that again. Our attitude to kingdom service is a mirror of our heart. Now watch this. We either have a heart for God or we have a heart for, op for the opposite. We can't be neutral. We cannot serve God and mammon. We will have to choose one and despise the other. And God's heart, listen, how many of you want to know what God's heart is? Let me show it to you just in case you, you already know, but I'll share it with you again. And God's heart is for lost mankind. Therefore, if you have a heart for turning lost mankind from darkness to light, you have the heart of God. If you don't have a heart for lost mankind, you do not have the heart of God. You have a heart, but you don't have the heart of God. That's God's heart. That's what God gave his only begotten son for. That's what Jesus gave his life for. Lost mankind. That's the heart of God. 
So we're going to have some 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 uh some things that we need to change in our walk with God. Praise be to God. And the scripture tells, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things would be added to you. Watch this. Kingdom stewardship simply means engaging in spiritual investments towards the advancement and enlargement of the kingdom of God. Should I repeat that? Kingdom stewardship simply means engaging in spiritual investments towards the advancement and the enlargement of the kingdom of God. In the book of Job 36 and 11, he said, If they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Kingdom stewardship is serving God and the interests of his kingdom as a lifestyle. Are you still with me? It is all about commitment to the growth, the expansion, the enlargement, and overall advancement of the kingdom. Kingdom stewardship, that's what it's all about. The expansion, the enlargement, and overall advancement of the kingdom of God. If we're not helping to advance the kingdom of God, to enlarge the kingdom of God, to expand the kingdom of God by reaching the lost, we don't have the heart of God. We are not even in the plan of God because that was God's purpose of sending his son, Jesus. Amen. So it's not about how many, how. Listen to this. Jesus, the gospel, the kingdom, it's not about how many houses you can have. God really, tell you the truth, God don't care how many you have. You can have a hundred of them if you want to, but that's not his heart. So it's, it doesn't matter how many houses we have. It doesn't matter how many cars we can have. Amen. Because you can't drive but one. I don't care if you got 20. It doesn't matter how much money you can have. You can have a billion dollars, but you can't eat but one plate of food just like a person ain't got but a hundred. Praise his name. It doesn't matter how many planes you can have, because if you've got 10, you can't fly but one. That's not what God's heart is about. God don't care about that stuff. He don't care if you have that stuff. If you want it, you can have it. It's yours for the asking. But God's heart is not there. God's heart is the, is the heart for lost mankind. So if we have a heart for lost mankind, we have the heart of God. Are you hearing me here this evening? Praise is wonderful. It's about the advancement of the kingdom of God by adding souls to the kingdom. That's what kingdom stewardship is all about. Adding souls to the kingdom of God, advancing the kingdom of God. Don't make it about yourself. It's not even about you. It's about advancing the kingdom of God. That's why God saved you so you could help advance the kingdom. If you got the heart of God, you will have no problem whatsoever trying to reach those that don't know Christ Jesus. Amen. So we're going to stop making excuses and start looking for ways to help advance the kingdom. The king, God's kingdom, the kingdom of God needs your help. The kingdom of God needs your employment. God has hired you from the moment that you got saved. He put kingdom in you and the kingdom of God is in you. So we are supposed to be advancing this kingdom, keep building on the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the most imp important thing in this realm, in the earth realm, in the heavenly realm, in God's heart. Oh, you're listening to me. The kingdom of God. The scripture tells, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God. That's the most important thing that we need to be doing as uh, kingdom citizens. Taking people out of the clutches of the devil. Bringing them into the family of God. And when you do that, God will see that you got his heart. God's heart was for you. He wants your heart to be for somebody else. Are you hearing me out here this evening? Praise his wonderful name. It's all about adding souls, expanding and, and uh, promoting the kingdom of God. Actually, that's not the only thing you're going to be rewarded for when you, um, that's, 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 that's the only thing that you're going to be rewarded for when you stand before God is how many souls, the souls that you want. You're not going to be rewarded for, 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 for praying. You're not going to be rewarded for, for having a house. 
the house is your reward. <laughs> you're not going to, you got going to be rewarded for that when you get the help. You, the only thing God is going to ask you is go in the look, search the book and see how many people you turn from darkness to light. You'll be surprised how many people will get to heaven and won't have nothing to offer to God because they never went out to try to reach the lost. It was always about them. It was always, I don't have time. It was always, uh, uh, I'm scared, uh, this and that. Why are you afraid of? You have Jesus in your life. You got boldness in your life. You got confidence in your life. Yeah, I heard a, a, a prime. He said that he wakes up confident in the morning. That's the way the church needs to start waking up with confidence. And he was he was funny, but he's powerful. He said this. They asked him what kind of cologne he got in. He said he, he don't wear cologne. He got on confidence. That's all we need to start reaching the loss and being the perfect will of God and be operating in the heart of God. When you start reaching out for the loss, you're reaching out. That is the heart of God. That is God's heart. The lost sinners is the heart of God. No matter how bad they might look or be, they are the heart of God. So whatever is God's heart should be our heart. So if God, if the loss is not our heart, then we don't have the heart of God. So that's why the scripture says, look at Proverbs 11, 30, say the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. What kind of fruit? Listen to this. The fruit that should be on your tree is the is 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 life of others hanging on your tree. Every soul should be every soul is a part of that tree of life. So the fruit the the fruit of the righteous, the fruit of the righteous, you need to start bearing some fruit. And the only fruit that God wants you to bear is the law. So every time you win a soul, you he's added to your tree of righteousness. Ooh, that's good, isn't it? Every time you win a soul, he's added to your tree of, of righteousness. So we need to load our tree up with the tree of, with the righteous. We need to turn people to righteousness and load up our tree. That when God sees it, boy, it's so heavily weighted with, with life, with the, with the sinners being added to uh, the kingdom of God because of us reaching out to reach, to turn them from darkness and bring them into the marvelous light. So the fruit of this righteous is a tree of life. And he that win his souls, listen at this, he that win his souls, he that win his souls, that's what God called every church to do, win souls. Come on. He called every church, every saved person, which is the church, is to win the lost souls. So you are using a lot of wisdom. The, the scripture tells the wise, listen to this, he that win his souls is wise. If we are not winning souls, I think that probably will leave us unwise. Amen. But we want to, I want everybody that's listening under the hearing of my voice to have the heart after God. Praise his wonderful name. Soul winning. Soul winning is a major commandment that makes a major commander of everyone that gets involved and participates in it. God will make you major. See, when you deal with the major, when you go and function in the major things that God considers as major, God will make you major in the earth realm. Praise be to his wonderful name. We engage in spiritual uh, stewardship by reaching out to the lost for their salvation. That's spiritual stewardship. Hello. God wants us to be concerned about those that don't know him. He loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son. That's a love for, guess what? Me and you were in that bunch. At one time, we were in that bunch of being lost. You and I, each one of us here tonight, were once in darkness and somebody had to snatch us out of darkness and bring us into the marvelous light. You may, not, you may not even remember the person who did it, but you're out of darkness and you're in the marvelous light of God. Somebody had the heart of God when they seen you and witnessed to you, talked to you about Christ and turn your entire life around, upside down. And you came and gave your life to Christ. Oh, what a blessing that is. Thanks be to God. Somebody had a heart like God's heart who reached out to us one day and brought us out of sin into salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So by redemption, listen at this. By redemption, every believer is ordained a soul winner. 
Every, every believer, you've been ordained by the hand of God to be a soul winner. You didn't even have to come to church. Nobody didn't have to lay no oil on you, put no oil on you, didn't have to say a special prayer over you. God has already did all of that. So God, by, just by you getting saved, every believer is ordained a soul winner, an ambassador of Christ, ordained to reconcile lost souls back to God. That's what the ambassador, you are ambassadors. You are an ordained soul winner. You ought to say that with me. I am an ordained soul winner. Now, I'm, don't, don't, no, don't repeat. Don't say I, I'm a lazy soul winner. Say I am an ordained soul winner by the hands of God. God ordained you already. God ordained you. You don't have to wait for no preacher to ordain you to go and win souls. You've already been ordained by God. The highest power that there is in the entire universe has already ordained you to be a soul winner. Praise be to God. To re reconcile the lost souls back to God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ did be ye reconciled to God. Look at that. God want us to reconcile people unto him. And in the NLT version of the Bible says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. How is God making his appeal to the lost? He makes his appeal through us. He got to have us. He makes his appeal through you and I to the lost so they can turn from darkness. We are the ones that God makes his appeal. Listen to this. Let me read it again. So we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Who is he making his appeal through? Us, you and I, those that are you that are listening at me this evening. You in this just like I am. And then he said, we speak for Christ when we plead. Listen to this. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. Come back to God. Come back to God. Turn your life over to God. Get out of the miserable situation that you're in. Come back to God. Darkness has given can off you but so much, and the more you get from darkness, the more the heavier the load of sin become on your life. Darkness takes you down into deep pits. And once it got a stronghold on you, it's hard to get free. But our job is to take the good news of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection to him. And Jesus can resurrect them from any stronghold of the adversary. But it's going to take you and I as believers to have a heart, the heart of God, to turn the souls from darkness and bring them into it. We have a responsibility, y'all. I say we have a responsibility. We must understand that God is glorified when we bear much fruits. And it is a risk to be fruitless as a believer. We should be adding more and more fruit to our tree of life. That when God sees, he said, oh yeah, they are bearing much fruit. Look at all the souls that they have won. Look at all the souls that they have brought into the kingdom of God. And you know when, this, and you know when the soul the kingdom stewardship of winning souls is over with when the rapture take place or whenever you die. And that's only for you. But those that are still here on earth still have a job to do. Amen. I said, amen. Praise be to God. That is because fruit bearing secures our place in Christ. You can read a couple of scriptures. You can go to John chapter 15, verses 2 and 8. And then Luke 13, 7 through 9. I won't read them uh, for the sake of time. They praise God. Now, wherever, listen to this. Every child of God should be a kingdom bearer of souls and always engaging in increasing the kingdom with souls. Always looking for an opportunity to reach the lost. That's, you know something? You don't have to go far to look for them. They're always crossing your path. And all it takes to you for, from you is to open your mouth, to get a conversation started, and bring them out of the darkness because you have the heart of God. 
Just look, see, God doesn't, the scriptures say the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, God don't want nobody to be lost. And the only, a lot of people are lost because a lot of them, uh, the sinners was assigned to us and we didn't do what we were supposed to do when we came across their path. Are you still with me this evening? Listen to me. Every child of God should be a kingdom bearer of souls and always increasing the kingdom of God with souls. Souls. Somebody say, soul winning is my game. If you're not adding souls to the kingdom, you're not in the perfect will of God. Say it again, preacher. If you're not adding souls to the kingdom of God, you're not in the perfect will of God. Because that what, that's what Jesus came. Jesus was in the perfect will of God. Because he came just to reach the law. Scripture says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. This is Proverbs 11, uh, 30. And they, and they then that turn, <clears throat> and they that turn many to righteousness, listen, to that, they that turn many to righteousness, many, not just one or two, you want to turn as many as you possibly can to righteousness. Uh, and, and they, and they then that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. God want to make you a star. Listen to me. You know what you know what will make you a star when you get to heaven? All those souls that you won. You you get to heaven, you find out you done you done reached three thousand souls. You done got them so you saved. Amen. You, you never know whether you can get someone uh, call somebody to come to Christ unless you try. If you never try, then you never will accomplish it. Praise be to God. It is important to note that in all labor there is probably nothing compares with the profits that we accumulate through spiritual stewardship. God is going, is going to reward us for every soul that we get saved. And that's the only thing that really matters to God. That's the only thing that people are going to be rewarded for is the lost souls that they snatched out of the devil's clutches. Amen. Spiritual stewardship is the most profitable of all spiritual engagements in the kingdom of God. Nothing is greater than winning the loss to Christ. Nothing. Nothing is greater than winning the loss to Christ. Once again, that's the only, I'm going to say this one more time. Once again, that's the only reason that Jesus came to this earth realm was to redeem the lost from the powers of Satan. The only reason. And he, listen, if he did, if no sinners were here, he wouldn't have had a reason to even come. <sighs> listen to me, beloved. God's heart is for lost mankind. You got to remember this. If that's your heart, if that's your heart, I put if. If is a two-letter word, but it's a big, powerful word. If that's your heart, then you have the heart of God. God's heart is for the Lord. And if you have a heart for the Lord, then you have the heart of God. Other than that, you don't. Look at this, Acts 26, 18. It says, this is the purpose of Jesus coming to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? Did you hear that word? God's, our job, we can turn people, we can change their lives. Praise his wonderful name. Colossians 1.13 says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? What was Jesus' purpose? Deliver us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. God loves for those of us that concern about the loss to reach out to them and bring them into the kingdom. Every day we should be thinking of some way that we can advance the kingdom of God by reaching someone and turning them to Christ. God's heart is for us to seek his kingdom and all its demands, and then it says all these other things will be added unto us. But the kingdom of God is the first and foremost, and God's heart in the kingdom is to reach the lost. We serve God on the harvest field. That's where we serve him at, on the harvest field, reaching out to the lost with undying passion to see them saved and established in the kingdom of God. 
Oh, what a blessing it is to see somebody, you bring somebody, you save some, get somebody saved and bring them to church and then you see their lives just change and they're a different person. And you look at that boy and you say, I had a part to play in this. And God allowed me to see the growth of that individual. God allowed me to see this change in that individual. Oh, what a blessing that is. Every time you reach a spring of soul out of darkness, what a blessing it is to the Lord and what a blessing the Lord will be to you because you are, you are, you are running after his heart. You're seeking after his heart. If you're seeking the Lord's souls, that is the heart of God. Oh, y'all hearing me out here this evening. Watch this now. In the church of God, every form of kingdom service is essential. Ushers, and once again, the ushers, the musicians, the praise leaders, the ch children, church, Sunday school, whatever you have it. But the word of God says in 1 Timothy 2 and 1, I won't read all of this. Uh, it says, 1 Timothy 2, starting at verse 1. I exalt, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have, listen to this, listen to what he said, who will have all men to be saved. Isn't that something? God want all men to be saved. He, well, when I say men, that means the uh, humankind, mankind. He said, I will, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. And when they come to the knowledge of the truth, then they can help somebody else come to the knowledge of the truth. It's our duty. It's our job. It's, and if we have the heart of God, we won't have no problem reaching for the lost. Redemption of souls, number one, entrance in the earth. And that was the only reason that God sent Jesus. He didn't send Jesus because you needed some money. He didn't send Jesus because you needed health. He sent Jesus because people needed, needed to change. They had The devil had a stronghold on them. Praise be to God. Jesus didn't come for miracles. Yeah, no, Jesus didn't come for miracles. There were all kinds of miracles before Jesus came. So Jesus didn't have to come for no miracle. <laughs> the dead were brought back to life before Jesus came. Je yes, Jesus raised Lazarus after four days, but people were raised from the dead before Jesus came. So Jesus didn't have to come for a miracle. But even the bones of Elijah raised the dead man. In the book of 2 Kings 13, 21, it reads as thus, it said, And came to pass that they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. So the, the dead was raised before Jesus even came. Jesus didn't come to raise the dead. That wasn't his purpose. He came, he came to save the dead. <laughs> dead to sin. Dead in sin. Any individual that's living in sin, they are dead. They're walking. They're the living dead. They're the walking dead. Some of y'all seen the movie years ago. I don't know. I, they might have played it in modern time. But they call it the living dead. People, you, you see, the, you, you pass by the living dead every single day. They have the stench of sin on them. So it's our duty to reach out to them and bring them out of darkness into marvelous life. And even when God gives you a miracle, it's for your use to, uh, uh, and opportunity to, to have it as a testimony. Amen? Praise his name. There are many miracles, but God so loved the lost. He didn't say God so loved the miracles. God so loved the lost. He so loved the lost, and he gave his only begotten son for the redemption of the lost. Are you hearing me this evening? When you make kingdom stewardship your priority, you're walking and living in the same steps that the Lord Jesus Christ did. When you are concerned about the laws, you are, you are walking and living in the same steps that the Lord Jesus Christ walked and lived in. If you're concerned about the laws. Stewardship is every believer's responsibility. Stewardship, kingdom stewardship is every believers responsibility to reach somebody while you are here on this earth realm not just one and quit it's a continuation of constantly reaching out bringing people snatching them out of the hands of satan 
and bringing them into the kingdom of the living God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Who is a servant? Anyone serving God and his entrance on earth, young or old, male or female, regardless of your talent, is a servant of God. Anyone serving God in his interest, anyone that's serving God and things that are interesting to God, whether you be young or old, male or female, regardless of your title, is a servant of God. We don't need any title to be a servant of God. You don't need no title to be a servant of God. Nobody don't have to give you a title to be a servant of God. You were born into the kingdom to be a servant. Praise be to God. Amen. In fact, being a servant of God is the highest title anybody can have. Being a servant in the kingdom of God is the highest title that an individual can have. Everyone that says yes to Jesus and to his instruction is a servant of God. It is written in John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. I like that little part. He already ordained you to be a servant. When we go as commanded and do as commanded, then we are a servant of God. So you can be an apostle, you can be a bishop, you can be a pastor and not be a servant. That blew your mind, didn't it? That, let me say it again. You can be an apostle, you can be a bishop, you can be a pastor, <laughs> you, can be, you can be an archbishop, you can be a pope and not be a servant. That doesn't make you a servant. By your title does not make you a servant. A lot of people got titles. God didn't give all of them the titles, but they're still not servants. You can be a church founder and not be a servant. You can find a church. You can, you, can, you can be the founder of a church and not be a servant of God. Chew on that a minute or two. Serving God is neither a calling nor a gift. It's a choice. Serving God is neither a calling nor a gift. It's a choice. The Bible says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, to serve the Lord, when we serve, when we're reaching out there to the center, we're serving God. Choose you this day to whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You remember that in the book of Joshua 24, 15? God does not pay title holders. Let's say it again, preacher. God does not pay title holders. Amen. He pays laborers. I'm going to say that one more time. God does not pay title. Just because you hold a title, God don't pay you for no title that you hold. He pays those that are laborers. So no matter what our calling a title is, it does not earn a thing from God. Only the laborer, listen at me careful, only the laborer is worthy of his hire. Is that scripture? Only the laborer is worthy of his hire. The it didn't say the title, the person holds the title, is worthy of his hire. But it said only the laborer, those that are laboring in the kingdom, stewardship, kingdom stewardship, reaching, trying their best, doing all they know how to reach those that are in darkness. If we labor today, We've committed God to pay our wages. God's going to take care of it because you're special to him because you're a soul winner. And you, it's not easy to find people that are, are rich souls. It's not an easy thing. So once he got him a, a, a general or someone that can reach out and take get those souls out of the hands of Satan, ooh, God will pay you and he'll pay great attention to you. He'll protect you. He'll keep you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free because he can depend on you being even as his son, Christ Jesus, was. Oh, Lord, help us up in here. Watch this. When Abraham, God called in the Psalm 105.42, the scripture says, For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. As great as Abraham was, Abraham was considered a servant of God. God did not, God was not concerned about him being a businessman or a military man because that boy had an army that was a second to none. Wherever they went, they just, they, they whipped, they wiped them out. And, it, and wherever his army went, I think he had about 300 men, but they beat anybody that they fought. But God did, was not even concerned about that. He didn't even concern about his, his uh, military abilities. 
he said that Abraham was his servant. And when you are a servant of God, God pays special attention to you as a servant. Are y'all still with me? Stick in here, hang in here with me a little few minutes more, and I'm going to let you go. Amen. So now, uh, watch this. Let's go over here to... Uh, just make a choice. All I can say to you today, I want to just make sure I say this. When, to make a choice, just make a choice to serve God so that he can keep your life secure. Keep your future and your posterity uh, secure. Make a choice and pursue, pursue your choice. Not looking for people's uh, accommodation. Because it's nothing more than human alkylates when they give you, and they'll come and pat you on your back. But you want Jesus, you want God to pat you on the back, not man. So when I, I have the heart of God and doing what God, listen, listen to this. When Jesus finished his work, the scripture said, let that mind be in us that's in Jesus. And God has highly exalted him for the work that he did. Highly exalted him, gave him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Listen to this. When you, are, you become a savior. God will command that people respect you as well. Are you here with me this evening? We don't have to be a pastor to serve God. Just make a choice to serve and we automatically become a servant of God. Serving the interests of another is what makes us the servant of that individual. So whatever inter is interest to God, if we are doing that, then we are God's servants. And what did I say the heart of God was when we first started on this teaching tonight? The heart of God is the lost souls, those that are in sin, those that are in darkness, those that the devil have a stronghold on and they can't get away on their own. God is waiting for you to arrive to get them free, to set them free from the powers of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of his light. Amen. Kingdom stewardship. You have a responsibility as a believer. You have, you've been ordained a soul winner. You've been ordained to bring people. You've been ordained already to be a servant. Whew. There are many founders in the world today who are not servants. Many people in the world today, but I mean the church nowadays that are not servants. It's all about them. But anybody in Christ, it's not about you. It's all about Jesus, all about reaching that, that person out there that don't know Christ Jesus. So their uh, serving is not a title. Listen at this carefully, and I'm finished. Serving is not a title, but it is a task. Serving, serving is not a title, but it is a task. A T-A-S-K. Amen. So I pray that you got something out of this this evening that will benefit you and help you in your kingdom walk that you can, uh, God has already assigned souls to you. Grab them, get them, snatch them out of the clutches of the devil. Don't just walk by and talk about them. Look at that there. They, they should be ashamed of themselves. They don't have enough in them to be ashamed. They don't know to be ashamed of certain things, to some of the things that they're doing. Because to them, it's the norm. It's the only, you only see it because you're out of darkness into God's marvelous light. That's the only reason you see it. If you're still in the kingdom of darkness, uh, many of us would be doing the same thing that some folk out there are doing right now. But God turned us and, and some, someone came along and snatched us out of the hands of the devil. Praise be to God. Amen. So I'm finished for the night. I pray that something was saved that helped you some, somewhat. Amen. I pray that you heard something that would encourage you and motivate you to start uh, being a better servant than what you already are. You may be serving, but let's take it to the next dimension of serving. Amen. Of reaching people, of bringing them out. Not being afraid of what the devil might do. Not being afraid of being cursed out. If they curse you out, you don't been cursed out before. And once they start cursing, you start moving. You don't have to just stay there and let them continue to curse you out. You go someplace else. Amen. But, uh, you know, uh, that's what sinners do. Amen. So you start. let's start reaching out. 
and doing what God has called us to do. Kingdom stewardship. <laughs> Kingdom stewardship. Reaching the heart of God. If you're going to reach the heart of God, you're going to have to have the heart of God. The same way God, what God's heart is all about, that's what your heart will have to be about. Amen? Well, if there's anybody that is listening to me this evening, to, tonight, and you want to give your life to Christ, you want to turn your life around. Amen. You're tired of going around and around in a circle. You've been trying. You done made New Year's resolutions, New Year's rev resolutions, resolutions, a year after year after year. And you're getting the same results and doing the same thing over and over and over. And you can, you haven't gotten nowhere. You want, you want to move to the next level, but you don't know how. The other, well, that's why I'm here tonight to help you. You're on the merry-go-round of life. And the merry-go-round of life will hold you on, on there. Because it loves its riders. It'll take you around and around in a circle all your life if you don't <laughs> if you don't know how to get off. Amen. So I'm going to show you how to get off tonight. If you want to get off and you want to see some change take place in your life. Now listen to this. This is not a one-on bandit that your, your, your entire life is just going to be all completely different all of a sudden. Amen. You give your life to Christ tonight. You might go and do something wrong tomorrow, but you repent of that thing and God forgives you. See, we are sanctified by the word of God. And once you give your life to Christ, then you start coming to the church and then you hear the word and the word is what start changing your life, what start help you to live according to the kingdom of God. So repeat this prayer after me if you want to start the process of change in your life. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner I need a savior. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, gave his life that I can have life and that more abundantly. Dear Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I invite you in. Sit upon the throne of my heart for you to rule, reign, and be my Lord, my master, and my soon coming king. I believe as of this very moment that my life has been changed and I'm a born again believer in Christ Jesus. Amen. So a simple prayer, just short prayers, just like that. And if you repeated that, admit it from your heart. God has ordained you to be a servant. You are just as saved as I am saved. If you believe that prayer. So I want to invite you to continue to uh, tune in every Wednesday night from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So you can learn the kingdom principles. Learn how to live in the, the kingdom life. Amen. So the way the world system operates, the kingdom of God system don't operate like the world system. So you want to learn how to operate according to the kingdom of God system. So you should be in need to start coming to church. Amen. So every Wednesday night, we're here, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, YouTube and Facebook live stream. And you have a cordial invitation from me right now to uh, worship with us in our live services at Life Changes Covenant Ministries, 2140 Eleanor Drive, North Charleston, South Carolina, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So we would love to see you. We'd love to have you in our services amen so once again i want everybody to know jesus loves you i love you and may god richly bless you and if you desire to sow a seed into the ministry tonight or anytime uh you can cash app us dollar sign lccm 2140 dollar sign lccm 2140 that's our cash app and you can look at the crawl on the bottom of the video and get the number to text as well. Praise God. Thank all of you all for tuning in. I pray that you've heard something that sparked, uh, started to spark in your life. That Lord, I'm going out here. I'm going to reach some people. I'm going to turn them to Christ. I'm going to go crazy for God. Reaching the laws. Amen. And don't you never forget this now. Don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. God bless you. Love you. Peace forever.